Hi. Yes, it's solar roadways time again. Oh, it's like playing whack-a-mole. It all started with solar freaking roadways and I did a video debunking that one. Then it was the uh, solar road in the Netherlands. Did a couple of videos debunking that one as well. And it's back in the news again because France, the minister, the French minister for silly walks has just announced that France intend to install a thousand kilometers of solar road from a French company called uh, What Way. Oh, here we go again. Let's whack this mole. So what's happened here? Eh, the French Minister for Silly Walks has probably seen some PowerPoint presentation from this company who's flogging this stuff and goes, oh yeah, that sounds all right. And oh, everyone loves green technology and I'll get some votes for that. Everyone will be happy. Yeah, we'll be world leaders. Yeah, let's plan to do a thousand kilometers. But it doesn't matter what politicians say or plan to do, engineering always trumps politics. Now this French system from a company called Colas, who's part of a bigger group again, like a $30 billion company. They're one of, uh, Colas is one of uh, France, if not Europe's uh, biggest road infrastructure uh, companies. They, that's what they do, they build roads. So they know road technology. So if anyone can build a solar road, it's them. They know what they're doing. They spent five years on this countless amounts of money actually developing this thing and I will grant them this it is the best effort yet at solar roadways unlike the brochures with their ridiculous solar freaking roadways that are hexagonal interlocking glass panel wankery things what are they they're solar freaking roadways it's technology that replaces all roadways parking lots sidewalks driveways tarmacs bike paths and outdoor recreation surfaces with solar panels and not just lifeless boring solar panels smart microprocessing interlocking hexagonal solar units so it started out with that rubbish, then it went to the solarroad.nl project, which I've done a video on, and just it's just impractical. We've got a year's worth of results we're gonna analyze here very quickly. And now, yes, we do have the best effort yet, because these things aren't made out of glass. Apparently they're, made, they're very thin, like seven millimeters uh, thick, and they're made out of like a, some sort of you know, resin polymer material or something like that. And they actually stick down to the existing roadway so you don't have to rip them up and replace them like the ridiculous uh, Brewshaws system or uh, even the Solar Road NL, which come as huge, big uh, concrete prefab blocks you just uh, slot in. So yeah, this is the best bet yet by an order of magnitude at least. It overcomes a lot of the uh, issues and cost uh, associated with the previous projects. Not hugely efficient as they admit, but hey, it should actually work better as a road surface, but I won't go into the road surface thing because hey, we've had like hundreds of years of road surface development and technology and all that sort of stuff. And is it any good? I don't know, I don't care. We're just gonna look at the solar aspect. Now, I shouldn't need long to debunk this thing at all, so I'll keep it as quick as possible. I have done previous videos, more extensive calculations and, and analysis and things like that. So click here if you wanna see those or click down below. Now we'll very quickly go back and just analyze the uh, Netherlands project, the solarroad.nl one. The last video I did, we looked at the six month test results and some people said, oh, let's wait until we get 12 months. Well, we do have 12 month test results and I won't go through all the details, but here's a summary of the results. Basically, the uh, Solar Road project is a 70 meter strip by 1.7 meters for a total area of 120 square meters. And they've said in a uh, press release after one year of having installed this thing, this is a real test on a real solar roadway or solar cycleway as this one is, it's not a road surface, 9,800 uh, kilowatt hours for that 120 square meters. That gives us 82 kilowatt hours per square meter. Now that sounds pretty good, but hey, we can compare that with rooftop solar systems and not just my own rooftop solar system I've done a video on. Click here to see some uh, test results from that. No, I'm gonna get three uh, rooftop solar systems within a couple of kilometers of this actual solar road in installation and through the pvoutput.org website which I'll link in down below for these three rooftop uh, systems here 
uh, from these uh, users there, uh, plotted their data, will get their data over the same time period within a couple of kilometres. So it's essentially, you know, an apples to apples comparison. And this is what we get for three different uh, users here. Uh, we got a result of 2,500 kilowatt hours, 2,100, 23, and I've actually gone through and checked the data sheets for their solar panels, got the square area, so we can uh, calculate a, an equivalent uh, output in square meters, and therefore 152, 145, an average of 146 kilowatt hours per square meters for the, these rooftop solar systems, just, you know, really low cost, you know, consumer rooftop uh, solar systems, not the more, you know, the fancier, higher efficiency commercial installations, which you'd really compare the uh, solar road system against, just rooftop ones, which aren't as good. Um, compare it, 146 kilowatt hours per square meter for the rooftop, 82 kilowatt hours per square meter for the solar road system. The solar roads is, has the 56% of the efficiency of a rooftop solar system. That's basically half, half the output. So right there, it, it, it's done and dusted. Why the hell would you pay for solar roads that give you half the output at best? Let alone, that's when they're used as cycleways, let alone uh, we don't have any data when they're actually used as road surface, when there's roads on there, there's traffic jams, there's dirt and grime and, and you know, uh, problems with uh, maintenance and things like that, them getting destroyed and chewed up and whatnot. It, it's at best, it's a half the output. Why would you do it? It's stupid, but it gets worse. Let's look at a cost analysis for this thing. Now, the CEO of um, Colas has actually admitted that uh, the cost they figure is going to be around six euros um, per watt peak. That's what WP stands for, basically per watt uh, output. And they reckon, you know, maybe with time and huge volumes and things like that, maybe, I don't know, hold your tongue at the right angle, cross your fingers and hope for, you know, some fairies can deliver three euros per watt. Now, commercial ground-based systems, here's some uh, data which I'll link in down below. It's a little bit old from 2013-14 uh, and it is already down to about 0.7 euros per watt peak. And uh, rooftop systems are generally considered to be about double a commercial installation. That's what I said before, a commercial one is actually going to be higher efficiency, lower cost and, and all that sort of thing generally um, than a rooftop system. But even a rooftop system, around about one double the cost, one and a half euros or thereabouts, what peak, it's going to be at rooftop systems are still going to be twice as good as the absolute best case theoretical ballpark bullshit figure that uh, the CEO of Colas has come up with. Oh, so when you combine the fact that at best it's going to be three times the cost of an equivalent uh, commercial ground installation for half the output, that is six times more dollars per watt you're paying for a solar roadway system. That's at best. As I said, doesn't include all the unknowns about using this as a road surface and output and maintenance and cars on it and dirt and grime and all sorts of crap like that. It's complete engineering folly. It's just crazy. At, like, it makes no sense. Solar energy is already, it depends on the argument you take, is that it's already sort of like a marginal uh, social infrastructure payback in terms of complete life cycle and things like that. And you want to do it on road surface, the worst possible conditions? You've got to be shitting me. And even to get down to that airy fairy pie in the sky, three euro per watt peak, the French government are relying on a single sole contractor who has the monopoly on this thing, no competition whatsoever, to drive the cost down? Are you kidding me? And for the few solar roadways fanboys still out there, their argument still remains the same. Oh, it's going to get lower cost, you know, with higher volume and the infrastructure, they'll learn to install them and maintain them. And, you know, costs will go down and down and down. Yeah, well, they're still going down and down and down for regular uh, rooftop and commercial installations as well. It's like they're still going down. There's still this huge gap of, you know, six times or more. It's probably even order of magnitude more cost dollars per watt. It's 
always going to be the case. Now the other argument is, well, who cares about the efficiency and all that? Surely some energy output is better than none, right? The roads are just sitting there doing nothing. Well, no, you don't get it. There's a much bigger issue at stake here. As a society, one of the biggest problems we've got, if not the biggest uh, problem for future sustainability is energy, energy supply, energy consumption. And it's our responsibility as a society to produce renewable energy systems that are as efficient as possible they get the most bang per buck if you went and implemented solar roads on a mass scale or even a global scale as these people want to do you know oh, it'll save the world didn't you know right if we just paved 10 percent of the roads in the world it can power the whole planet if we did that it'd be nothing short of an ecological disaster because they would need so much maintenance the infrastructure the cost just when you try and do a life cycle analysis of a solar roadways it's ridiculous ridiculous wouldn't even know where to begin we're only just coming to terms with uh, proper solar systems that we have now in that are done in the most efficient way possible rooftop systems and ground-based solar systems they're incredibly efficient they're getting more efficient by the day they're incredibly reliable about as reliable as you could possibly get why would you implement something that's an order of magnitude or more worse efficiency has no end of maintenance problems and we haven't even started discussing uh, how we're going to uh, this system engineering stuff involved in this thing not just as a road surface but how they're all wired together you'll note you won't find any photos or any video or anything mentioned at all about how they actually get the uh, get the power out of these things wire them all together it's all maintained do you have a micro inverter on each one what are the ar the arrangement of the arrays and all that sort of stuff what happens to maintenance and everything else like just the system engineering involved in that because if you implement them as roadways you've got to have the channels down the sides of the road so they've got to be shared with the gutters and the drainage and the <sighs> as an engineer as a design engineer somebody has got to implement this sort of you know crazy idea the engineering challenges are just mind-boggling and no it's not good enough just to say well they're just challenges we can overcome those no it's just fundamentally face palm worthy stupid don't put them on the roads sure they might be useful in a niche application or something like that you know yeah, if you want to do some parking lot or something okay some park cycleway or something eh, whatever you know okay fine but implement them on a mass scale is lunacy and no doing research on solar roadways is not researching new solar technology all it's doing is taking existing solar panel technology and using it in the most abusive and most inefficient way possible and by the way i've been incredibly generous in these calculations here saying you know at best uh six times dollars per watt it's as i said going to be an order of magnitude worse this does not take into account the maintenance of a road service when you take a solar panel and you drive cars on top of it oh, are you insane why would you put anything on top of a solar panel it is just stupid this is why after five years of development all you'll see from these companies is just a photo of a truck just you know parked on top of the solar panels they haven't actually implemented a kilometer of the thing as a real road and actually have trucks driving on and slamming on their brakes and all sorts of wear and tear for a year before you even consider such a bloody engineering folly like this unbelievable so can we just stop this solar roadways bullshit please it's just ridiculous the numbers will never ever work to put something on top of a solar panel oh